Here's Brody Brazil. It has been a fascinating offseason for the San Francisco Giants. And I suppose you could begin externally with what the Dodgers have done, Otani, Yamamoto, and others, and all of that deferred money. It's interesting, but it's also interconnected to the division rival up in San Francisco. Internally for the Giants, obviously there were some holes to fill. There were some needs that are still being sorted out. And you also have a fan base that's very specific on what they want in trying to address certain shortcomings and also a commitment. They want to see a certain type of player, a certain type of dollar amount. They almost want to see a statement as much as they want to see a complete roster. And that's why when San Francisco signs free agent Jorge Soler, they're happy about it, the Giants fans are, but it's not necessarily something that they completely saw coming or was very predictable. And obviously he checks a lot of the boxes for this team, but let's dive into Jorge Soler, now three years and a $42 million reported deal with the Giants. He's 32 years old, or he's about to be in a couple weeks. He's already got 10 MLB seasons under his belt, primarily a corner outfielder for much of his career, but in recent times, more of a DH with Miami. We'll talk about that in a second. Broke in with the Cubs, a lot of good years with the Royals. In fact, some of his best years in Kansas City, won a World Series with Atlanta in 2021, and most recently was a fish. I guess you could say the Giants caught a fish. He hit 36 dingers last year in Miami, which was not his career high. Actually hit 48 back in 2019 with Kansas City. But also in that year, he played all 162 games, which is not typical for a Jorge Soler season. We'll address that later on in the video. But most importantly, yeah, coming off a 36 homer season, that alone should be enticing to Giants fans. Their offense was abysmal in the second half of last year. You could easily say it cost them a playoff spot. So to get that type of power, to get hopefully a three or four hitter in your lineup that can produce, that can hit for power, drive in runs, all the above, that's certainly something San Francisco is looking for. A career 243 batting average, I believe he hit seven points above that last year, 250 batting average. And once again, a three-year $42 million deal reported for Soler. But there are a couple things to take note of here. He's played only 100 games or more four times across 10 seasons of Major League Baseball. And I looked up the injuries because I'm not familiar with every single one over all the different years, but it's kind of a laundry list. Uh, Fingers, hips, uh, groins. There's a lot of different things in there. So it's, it's not one particular thing or another. I did see a couple oblique injuries. So he's kind of been through a lot. And the question of maybe durability or playability, again, 100-plus games only four times across 10 seasons. You'd think the Giants need an everyday hitter in the lineup. And for as much as they still might be about picking and choosing matchups, you want somebody who's available in as many games as possible, certainly well more than just 100. There's also this, 870 games played. Again, do the math, 870 across 10 years, that's about 87 games a season, has hit a bunch of home runs, 170 home runs in 870 games, but 927 strikeouts. So basically striking out at least once per game across his career. Now, on the flip side, I mentioned that he was with Atlanta, was uh, there with the Braves only half that season, but the most important part when they went on to win the World Series He crushed a bunch of dingers against Houston in that 2021 World Series. He was the World Series MVP with Atlanta in 2021. So you just kind of love that prestige. Somebody's got that under their belt. They've had that experience. They know how to rise to the occasion. And obviously, you'd hope to get him back into a playoff spot. But he's been there. He's been around winning teams. He definitely understands that. And I said before, uh, an outfielder, a corner outfielder, but he mostly DH'd with Miami across the last couple seasons. And getting past past the 30-year-old mark, you wonder what San Francisco really wants and needs here. Certainly there are some roles to be had in, in outfield spots, but maybe mostly a DH for Jorge Soler, especially if that keeps him in the lineup on a more regular basis. And if you look at the Giants' offseason, I get we were focusing on Soler there for a second. If you actually look at the Giants' offseason, there's the criticism of, well, We're still waiting for that next 
big signing. And obviously, again, when Otani and Yamamoto are the big ones to go and they're in your division and that's what the Dodgers are doing, you look back on yourself and say, have the Giants done enough? And if you actually start to compile the list here, and we're still not done, by the way, it's crazy that we're only a couple days away from spring training starting, pitchers and catchers are about to report, but this is actually a lot of work that's been done. This is not everything. You're talking about a brand new manager, basically a brand new coaching staff. That alone is a huge transition for a baseball team. Jung Hoo Lee, I'm still very excited for him in the leadoff spot, contact hitter, table setter. Let's see what he can do in San Francisco. Tom Murphy adds some depth to the catching position. You've got two power arms in Robbie Ray and Jordan Hicks. Ray said he'll be ready. I saw this a couple days ago, right after the All-Star break. So you get a second-half star, a Cy Young caliber pitcher in Robbie Ray, and again, the addition of Jordan Hicks. And now you get Jorge Soler. And also this, Amir Garrett has been signed to a minor league deal, could bolster the bullpen. I don't think the Giants need a closer, but definitely somebody who you can trust, a veteran out of the bullpen. Let's see if Amir Garrett actually makes this team. He's got a minor league contract right now signed with San Francisco. So again, if you kind of just look at all of this in total, right, and you add Soler into the the conversation here, now you can start to see movement. I understand it wasn't the one big Christmas present, right? Maybe that's how people look at things. You'll, you'll remember the big present the most. But there's a lot of different additions and gifts, gifts to the roster. Why was that hard to pronounce for San Francisco this winter? They have been busy. They have been making other maneuvers, not just these, unloading some contracts, freeing up some money, and now you're starting to see it. But here are my ultimate takeaways. Yes, yeah, slow and steady. That kind of has been what the Giants are doing here. Yeah, it's not the big deal here, the big deal there, the one that you go, ooh, that's going to be a lot. I don't really know if that feels like a safe deal or a lucrative deal. I mean, I, I think in this point, this one's not a huge gamble. You get a player that's still in his uh, early 30s. It's only a three-year deal. I'll talk about why this can't be the end of the Giants' pursuits this offseason in a second, but it still continues their pace of the winter. And there still are some very big names out there. If you're telling me, go back to that list, all of that, plus a Matt Chapman, plus a Blake Snell, either one or the other, both would be great, but one or the other, I think you'd have to be pretty satisfied with that winter. And maybe it's just the, the order in which things have unfolded, right? Or if they all happened at once, if all of that happened within a week span, you'd be like, whoa, this was a busy Giants team. But it's kind of the way this offseason is playing out across Major League Baseball. The signings have been so slow and few and far in between. Solaire, obviously, at the top of the lineup, fortifies what the Giants are trying to do in terms of a power hitter, three or four hitter, obviously, in Bob Melvin's lineup. You've got your leadoff spot spoken for. You can probably figure out who your two hitter is. So, yeah, Solaire, three or four. You don't need to use him as an everyday outfielder. And again, I think that's kind of a luxury. You can play him out there in one of the corner spots. If you're trying to maximize how many games he gets in, how many at-bats, you could also obviously DH him. But I do think that he has to play more than 100 games for this to work, right? For this to be a good deal, for this to be looked back upon as something beneficial. Just thinking about four seasons only across 10 of 100 or more games. And I'm not you know, knock on wood, not here to predict the future. I'm just looking, you know, in the past at the track record. You just want to see him out there as healthy as possible and for as many games as possible. So again, this is not a huge gamble, three-year deal, $42 million. But I also don't think it can be the end for San Francisco. To really say it was a good offseason at this point, all right, you're making progress. It's that whole slow and steady thing. Um it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Whatever other cliches I can use, it, it really does feel like that. But if you want to actually win this winter, you're that, you're, you're, you're that far because those are big signings, a Snell or a Chapman, but you're that close. And like I said, if you get one or the other at this point, I'm here to look back and say that's a pretty thumbs up off season. There's a lot to be done, and there was a lot done, and there still are some questions. Who's your shortstop going to be? Who actually are your outfielders going to be? 
But in terms of a power bat and kind of a sneaky good signing, I think that's what Jorge Soler brings to San Francisco. Hey, you made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. And if you're just coming across me and this channel for the very first time, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Make sure that you subscribe so I can definitely see you back here next time.